Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds, and we are on our Nerdarchy live chat number 156, and we're talking with the folks from World Am Anvil, Demetrius and Janet. And uh, I just connected with you guys on on Twitter not too long ago, and you got this really cool project you're working on. I haven't had a ton of time since we've met to to dive in there, but I've just you know took a cursory look, and it it looks like a real, really cool application, community based. Um, platform you know like a social media platform for people that want to build uh worlds so uh with that if you guys want to kind of like introduce yourselves a little bit and we'll go from there oh uh, yeah okay so hi i'm janet i've been playing rpg since i was sort of 10 or 11 and writing fancy books for a long time and i'm part, half the team of world Anvil. and i am the other half of the World Anvil team. I'm Dimitris. I'm the de developer and the designer behind uh, World Anvil. I've been a developer pretty much all my life as far as I remember, and that's the same amount of time I was a role player as well. Uh, world builder for probably a bit more, and um, still, <laughs> essentially. So, uh, what, what inspired this project? And it's fa fairly new. You guys have thrown it together really quick. I think you said something like June you started working on it. Yeah. I started coding. I started so coding. I started writing a book in April or May, and I was having just a hell of a time trying to put it together. And there were so many POV characters, and I was just having a real trouble with world building. And then Dimitri started making me a tool. Yes, that's like, how it started. Literally, that's how it started. Yeah, I wanted to help my wife essentially create a better world for uh, what she was doing and to you know get some a weight of her back. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to build something for you. And the first month was just about, was about Janet and it was about helping her and getting feedback from her about what she needs. And then I was adding my thoughts of world building and how we can actually be, do it better. And then at some point we said, hey, that's a good tool actually. We yeah. should actually share it with the world. So at some point mid August, I said, I'm going to make a website out of it. Right, let's open it up. Let's see what happens. Yeah, and that's how it started actually. It was the idea of helping and that's why it's very important for us actually sorry i didn't know if i said that but it's not just a world building tool it's a place for people to be inspired and inspire other people it's a place for world building to thrive through community not just build a world like it is a fully functional system to build a world bible that that it is already but it, we want to make it much more we want to become like the deviant art for world builders if that's a, a nice way of putting it i guess yeah. No, that that definitely invokes a certain certain thing, and most people know what DeviantArt is. So that that that's great, and that, so that that's a cool story. So basically, you know, your wife needed a tool for writing, and you're like, "Well, here it is." You're a much better husband than me, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go, man! Way to make the rest of us just look like jerks. Thank you very much, and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I I guess. Uh, I have to be, admit that I have tried to build a tool like World Danville about three or four times before, but having somebody to be inspired and somebody that actually wants and really needs this tool really makes it easier. You know, developers and people who uh, have like two or three jobs uh, at a time sometimes don't have enough time, and I had to make the time for this time around to make it work. So Janet provided the inspiration and the, re the reasoning and the desire behind it. So yeah, that's why it happened. Nice, your, your muse, if you will. So. Guys, if you're you know, if you're looking for what we're talking about, it is in the description. You can find them on social media as well as the website. And for a very very limited time, you've opened opened it up uh, beyond just the beta testers, uh, which I didn't realize. I I snuck in there by accident this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, normally uh, at this point, as I said before, uh, World Downhill is only up for 25 days now, literally 25 days. And we are still in beta. We are still in closed beta. But because uh, talking with the community, we wanted to create something that will inspire and create some, you know, like uh, something to do for the for the guys to push them to create the world. We created what we called World Ember. World Ember is essentially uh, the evil, uh, let's say, the evil twin of NanoRimo. And map November and to November. November, yeah. November to today. So essentially, it's a challenge that says that. You have 31 days from December 1st to December 31st to write 36,000 words, uh, words in one world. 
And of course, we're going to be giving badges. We're going to have a way for you to track your progress. And you're going to have a way to rank and actually uh, essentially a leaderboard to check your progress against everybody else. And because of that, and because we want everybody to be able to enjoy it, we said, you know what, we're going to open the website from now. That's today, actually. We opened up today in the morning, probably just before you came in, in the website, uh, until the beginning of December. So people can actually jump, jump in and start actually world building. So uh, when when you start creating in in World Anvil, is it automatically open or is that an option? Open as in public, you mean? Yes, public. Yeah. So uh, right now, uh, everybody who joins World Anvil uh, is able to have a public world. If you want to have a private world, then actually you can help us in Patreon, and then we're going to give you what we call a guild membership like a whole builder's guild membership, which allows you essentially to have your worlds in private if you want it and give you some other extra perks. The truth of the matter is that most of the features are there for everyone. The only reason we do that is because we want to essentially continue building World Anvil and want to continue actually not having to be, I mean, interesting story. When we first started 10 days ago, the story was, oh my God, we have to find a way to cover the expenses for World Anvil. But with the support, the immense and amazing support of our community, actually, we managed to cover the expenses within the next 10 days, the first 10 days, first which, 10 was, days yeah. which was amazing. We never even thought that it would happen. Literally, second day, we were saying, oh my God, I don't know for how many months I can actually pay for this. Yeah, for the first two days, we were <laughs> like, well, if it's just us, maybe we can take it down. Yeah, at some <laughs> point. But no, it, we managed to actually cover our expenses, and now we're actually growing, and the the next expectation is for us to essentially literally for me to leave my day job and continue building just called Dunville for the people if all goes well. Yeah, because we both have real jobs as well. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, cats. <laughs> so what do you guys feel were important things to incorporate in your software as people have who've created their own worlds as a person who is creating your own world and, and was having trouble organizing things? Uh, we got over 70 people in the chat right now live with us hanging out and and I'm sure they want to talk about world building as, as well. And, you know, the World Anvil is going to give you guys the ability to go sign up and have a platform where you can uh, where you can do that and organize it. So w with that, let's go into what's what were the important features for you guys? What do you think were important for building a world? Yeah. Timelines. <laughs> well, you this start. is one of the major ones is timelines because there aren't. Like there are some places where you can put your information down in an organized format. I mean, I I kept my world building just in a Google Doc for ages, and the problem is that it it becomes chaos. But um, which is also worth worth talking about. But the real thing for me was timelines and being able to met, like just show out what is going on in my world, and then when I want to stuff new stuff in. I can do that very, very easily and I can sort of reference everything. And referencing is really, that was the second thing that I was desperate for, is being able to have information and being able to cross-reference to something else. So when I'm talking about a character, I can be like, oh yeah, and this character is this ethnicity and um, a part of this nation, for example. And I then don't have to duplicate all the information because I can just cross-reference, mention the article of the ethnicity or the country or whatever else I'm I'm doing and then cross-reference so literally when I'm scrolling through and I'm like wait who is this guy um oh yeah I remember he's the guy with red hair and purple eyes and he eats aliens and then I can click on all of those tags that I've, I've cross-referenced and be able to go to them directly so you kind of jumped in another feature now yeah. so essentially yeah so timelines is one of the features in World Danville that allows you to create essentially historical representation of your world and in fact, funny enough, is the, the second feature we are redoing because timelines within the next week will be getting a huge reshuffle that will allow you to have parallel timelines, will allow you to have secret timelines and many other things that people ask in the community. One of the important features of World Danville is the, the ability to create articles of specific templates that give you, A, some starting points to inspire you and to actually get you going with what you want to build. This can be a person, a location, a settlement, a, a, an ethnicity, a culture, a species, or, you know, there are actually about 14, I think, now, and we have more coming up, like two or three coming up at least within the next three weeks yeah, or so. And they prompt you to answer questions about your subject. Yes. And the other thing you can actually do with articles, which is very important, is that they have connections between them. And the, that's a very strong thing about a World Danville, that when you write, for example, in a wiki, you can link other articles. That is true. Uh, but what you cannot do 
is actually to have a template that actually makes the article unique and it doesn't look like another white page with some information in it. We actually also have things that are uh, we call supporting the enhancements on this article. Like, for example, I'll give you a, uh, a good example would be organizations. Organizations as an entity is an entity that allows you to have any sort of organization, anything from an empire and a kingdom to a small gang of people. Part of this uh, template is the diplomacy system that allows you to define the relations between these people, this party, and other, for example, organizations in the world. So creating an intricate network of relations and how people react to, to with each other. Uh, people will also have, for example, the same thing for relations, the personal relations they have. And also uh, other articles will also have this kind of enhancements as we uh, move further along into the development. The other thing I wanted to do, which was very important, is that when you sit down and you write about something, there are so many cases that, you know, you say, yes, I want to talk about this person, like person X, but you haven't written the article just yet. In most cases, that means that you essentially have to write the name there and you never connect it, and then at some point write an article for this guy and then connect them if you remember where this mention was. In World well Dunview, you can actually just create a placeholder saying, for example, this person and then you just link and say this, this link this links to a person that doesn't exist. And in later time, as you see your article, you can just click on it and create the article for this person, which means you can create connections about articles that don't even exist just yet. That That is some uh, really cool features. Um, what about hover cards? I, you know, I've been really like uh, diving into D&D &D Beyond a little bit, and they use hover cards, and I really, really love them. <laughs> They're not integrated just yet, but it's definitely one of the things I would really love to do. Uh, right now, we're working actually into a system that people love because we launched it literally yesterday, which is essentially the ability to create a map and then just drop pins into it, which means that you can actually have a completely different visualization for your world. You can actually link into, organ into locations, organizations, or even uh, like landmarks, landmarks in, your, yeah. in your world, essentially. And we want to focus more into the structure of the world first and then go to the more advanced features like that. Yeah. So how much does it cost to sign up for um, for someone who wants a private membership? Well, once they're being the guild? Effectively, it doesn't cost. Well, sort of, because effectively it doesn't cost. This is patronage, OK? So right now, we don't actually have people who are paying for membership. We give membership to all our patrons. When the website launches, we think we, honestly, I haven't even done the calculations. I mean, in 25 days, I was just coding. I haven't even had the idea of going into the business of it, if you can actually imagine that. But I think that the membership would be something between three to five dollars per month, probably towards the low, the lowest and the high than the highest of these things. We don't want. We really don't want to actually make like you know to become like the next Elon Musk of world building or anything like that. All we want to do is to have a website that we can actually be able to sustain ourselves at some point from, which means we're going to have to continue building it and continue being there for everyone to enjoy. That, that's the idea behind the, uh, the model, if that makes any sense. It's, it's that simple. We're just a couple. We're not like, we don't want to have a business out of it or like anything major out of it. Kind of no, I'm not worth Vader. I don't want an empire. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know if the demand grows great enough. You, 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 you might have to rise to the occasion. Well, no, I think about it because it, it's, it's an awesome tool. Um, from everything you guys have said so far, and I feel like we've only just scratched the surface, but then like instantly because I do run a business and I think in those terms often, I'm like, well, you know, it's a great community thing, but it also sounds like it'd be a great professional tool as well. And if you're doing something professionally, you don't want to have all your ideas, you know, getting pulled from underneath you. So obviously... You know, or maybe you maybe you would want some things public and some things private. Um, yeah, actually, yeah. we do have thoughts about that. It's true, it is true that most people who actually go for the membership, apart from the people who are just our amazing supporters that really do it from the bottom of their hearts and we love them to bits, that, that's not even a question. We have a lot of people who get a subscription because they're writers who write their books and they want to use World Downville for what it is, so not, a not a community. But exactly, as a world Bible. Yeah, as a professional tool, essentially, in, which it is. Yeah. In the future, we actually want to progress a bit more with that. Uh, the idea was, and it's a very strong idea still, we want to empower people and want to empower world builders to become better at what they're doing. So the idea that we have right now is that we would like to be able to, for people who are uh, into the guild membership, 
to be able to create different roles, like subscribers essentially on their uh, private roles, that will allow them literally to go to a Patreon, for example, and open up a new Patreon page and say, look, I'm building this world, please help me out. So, and then they can give special access to, to specific articles to specific people or specific groups of people. Which essentially will essentially become a private publishing tool for people who actually want to use Patreon or any other tool. It can also be used, for example, from writers if they want to give special access to, you know, unique content to people so, that actually bought their book. Yeah, for, for example, unpublished content or even things like short stories. Exactly. So, World Anvil, it's only open to members that join the site. Like, there, there's no like public face to it. The public face is only internally, correct? No, I, well, it is right now, uh, but this will change within the next two weeks. If not, if not faster. Uh, we are literally building right now a homepage that will be like the DeviantArt page that you know. Essentially, it will be a list of all the recent articles being posted, featured worlds, biggest worlds, most liked worlds of the day, all what you expect to see from a Deviant-like website. Okay, so we have a couple things in the chat I want to address. One, Jim Davis just started uploading and setting up mine this weekend. Tons of organization tools and functionality. So there you go, guys. There's a web DM uh, uh, endorsement right there, Jim Davis. Thank you, Jim Davis. Uh, and then Brian F has a question. What sort of user agreement is there? Is the user's intellectual property protected? So uh, we have it already at the photo of our website. Uh, we will never, and I say that live so everybody can actually you know, reference back to that, we will never and for any reason whatsoever claim any property or uh, like ownership over your content. Never. We are builders as well. We are yeah. writers and we understand deeply the importance of intellectual property. Yeah, yeah. Your stuff is your stuff. We don't want it, Period. it's yours. In fact, we are actually exp experimenting and trying to find ways to may be able to prove that your things are your things because everything that you are actually building in World Danville every hour is being stored in what it's called glacier storage, a storage which actually is read only. So in theory, and I'm not saying that because it depends on the court and it depends on the country, it's almost admissible to a court of law as proof that this work is yours and we'll be more than happy if needed be to release it you know, as such. Yeah, so if somebody else tries to make off with your intellectual property, come to us and we will try to help you. As, as much as we can, of course, yeah. That, and, and that is awesome. I, for our own website, we use a plugin called DigiProve, and it like digitally stamps every page that ever goes on our website. Sorry, so can you tell me what it's called again? DigiProve? Um, Proof. OK. You said you had I had Digiproof. Yeah. That, that, uh, <laughs> that, that's, a different, that's a totally different web thing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep, that's dark. That's from the dark web. Sorry, yeah, carry on. That one for Nerdarchy After Dark, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's in a green light, I assume. Uh, so, guys, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, just put question before the question or GM911 before the, the question so that they're easy for us to pick out. Um, so, what are you guys most excited about with this project? I mean, I, to me, it's probably been like a whirlwind for you guys. And how many members do you have? You told me off you know, before we went live. We literally, at this point, have 2,000 subscribed users, and that grows every day. And it is so amazing. The response was overwhelming. And the only way I could respond as a developer is to literally spend every living hour trying to make the website better, to the point that my wife yesterday told me, you have to stop working now. You've been working until 5 o'clock in the morning, and it's 10 in the evening. Let's go sit down and watch some arrow. You know, it, it's as, it goes as simple as that. And it's true. I mean, it's such an overwhelming support and such an overwhelming, uh, so much love we get from the people that actually just makes me want to work more and, you know, help them build things. Every time that somebody tells me that they find a bug, I'm heartbroken because I'm thinking, oh my God, they might have lost work, you know. And it's like, they didn't most of the times, but, you know, if they did, I would be like, petrified that the idea of you know <laughs> this might happen and it's better i understand it's better of course we always say it is better but it doesn't make it any easier for me <laughs> well you know that brings up a good question is there any lines for pe any um uh is there any um ideas for ways for people to back up offline if they if they want to yes 
Yes. Uh, in fact, that was also one of the things that we wanted to address as quickly as possible. We were we've been taken by storm because we were not expecting to have so many requests of new features coming up. But yes, uh, I will be doing a very quick implementation of exporting your data at least by article by uh, article by article basis to begin with. But I would like uh, at some point when the feature is fully implemented to be able to go there and say export my world in an HTML or a markdown kind of version so you can actually just have everything safe and sound. Or you know, if you go to on holidays and you want to have a reference, for example, or if you play a game on uh, your table and you don't have internet, like somebody told me the other day, if I go to an expo, I would like to have essentially my world with me and they don't have internet all the time. So, okay, you know, I, I can try to essentially be able to have a printout of everything you have in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Expos and internet. That's that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> Don't get me started. We we've gone to a few and the, the what they charge for internet is like it should be a crime. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I've been quoted between, you know, a thousand and two thousand dollars an hour. An hour. I know. Like I'm so in the wrong business. Is it provided by naked sylphs? I mean, wow. <laughs> I would buy them. <laughs> <laughs> you just want naked selfs. Yes. <laughs> I do not blame you. So yeah, the other thing that's been really amazing is the, the Discord community. Yes. Which has just been like hopping. Which yeah, I keep telling myself I have to figure out Discord, but it, I'm old and it confuses me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have to admit that we have people that came to us 25 days ago when we first launched. And, you know, I, I remember specifically one of our users, James, that we came to me and said, hello, for example, you know, I'm James. And he was my first user. That was 25 years ago, uh, 25 days ago. And today, <laughs> feels like years. It feels like years, yes, exactly. <laughs> but today, we have literally every single time, every single moment, like I said, about 100 people. And that's actually not the peak. It's just the lowest part. Yeah, that's like our, our constant. Exactly. And, and that's a lot of people. Like, and I was so happy that people stepped up and they say, like, my felt my newly made friend Pradeep and all the uh, people who became community moderators that essentially just told me, you know what, Dimitris, just go and code. We will take care of Discord because you cannot do both. And we want you to code because you are the only one being able to code. So <laughs> these guys have, like, my eternal love and probably I will give them cookies during Christmas or something. Like that. We have to organize that, by the way. That's how you build them to the dark side. Yes, exactly, with cookies. So, I, would you guys, are you guys capable of, or would you like to do some screen sharing? We can try that. Yes, we can definitely try that. Let me... Maybe we could get a peek at Janet's world. What? Right, tell me if you can actually see my screen. I can. Great. Ooh. So, uh, Wait, I'm, oh, I'm on the admin side. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so that's our admin up there. You don't need to know what's up there. So I and, see that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so this is essentially the community dashboard of World Danville. Uh, the top side here, you can actually see, is the new new addition about World Denver. When the competition starts, this little bar here will start be filling with your words as you fill more words into your world. And down here, we have our stream that shows all the latest amazing stuff that people did. Like, for example, let's go and see something. So this is a, an island of a, a plateau, actually, of a world that a very good friend of ours, Alice, built. And you can see, for example, it talks about uh, the world and the geography and the natural resources of it. You can like it because it's amazing. It's so colorful. Yes. Mm. You can also, of course, do references to which world there is under, which category it's under, who is the author, and to leave comments into it. Uh, if we go to the world, for example, you can actually see a small uh, snippet about what uh, Alice was working on. Uh, you can see the featured articles she wrote, the recent articles, her maps, her tweets when she's live, actually, to actually see her. Uh, specifically, uh, Alice was not actually working so far on World Danville, but She's an amazing painter, so you definitely go you have to see her stuff. They are amazing. And here you can actually see the table of contents of your world with everything that she did and the followers that she has in her community and her timeline. I don't know actually she think, yeah, she does have a timeline. So this is actually an example of how her timeline works. Yeah. So these are all the this is the public face of her world. So yeah. the interface looks different when you're creating, but this is how other people see it. Um and her world is a really 
good one because she writes a lot and she writes really interesting things and she has good grammar, which we like. Okay, I found something I actually didn't have any searches, but essentially uh, when you when you are in everybody anybody's world and also in your dashboard, I think one of the most important features for World Anvil is the idea that you can actually write literally three word, three letters, and you can find a reference that you have in your world. And that can become from the view, but also if you're in your dashboard, for example, and let's say you're playing a game with your friends and you want to remember how the hell does, uh, who, for example, what is the secret that you have for this um, uh, world, for this uh, article. So you can go here and write three words and you go into your article. And within your article here, that's a location, for example, you can have the title, you have an excerpt, you have a free form kind of prose. And then underneath here, you always go into the specifics of, it, of each article. So, for example, because it is a, a location, it has a parent location, it has a type, which there are essentially several, anything from a corpse to a dimensional plane. You know, that's essentially the, the size. Talk about the geography, the resources, the owner, or anything, if anybody else like that. Um, the owner, if it's an organization. Uh, and extra things you want to put in the sidebar. And then you have underneath here notes that you can keep for your for your world, the, which are things that only you and your co-authors can see. Secrets, which at this point only you and your co-authors can see, but when subscriptions come in place, this can be essentially allowed to be seen by, for example, the DMs that play through your world. So imagine you have a world and you share it with people. If you want the DMs that actually uh, play on this world to know a bit more information about this, or for example, the secret plots that are in place or anything like that, that would be the place to write a plot that people can actually see. And then you have essentially specific to the article historical records. Uh, you can always have historical records outside the article, but this is specifically for the article itself. Then you can actually define, of course, a, a, an image to put on the top, a cover image. Uh, or to display it as a map, which was kind of a redundant version right now because now we have maps. And uh, you can set the category. You can set the position of where it is in terms of the category and how it looks. You can add text to it. Like, for example, say that this is, for example, a planet. And it is awesome. And cheese. It's not cheese, it's hydria. And then you can actually say that it's featured. And if it's featured, it shows higher in the list of your in your world. And that's a draft if you don't want people to see just yet. You know, even if it's public or private, a draft means that essentially you will be able, the only one being able to see it. And if you want to allow comments or not. And then, you know, if you have a subscription to set as public or private, of course. Um, then we have the notes, which is simply a way for you to go through and write your notes. Because I think that one of the most important things that people don't understand is that the best ideas don't come when you just sit in front of your screen and you start writing. They come when you sleep. They come for me, for example, they come when I'm in the shower. And sometimes you cannot really action them until you, you know, have the time to write. So writing a note there and keeping it there just in case, and then being able to develop it, I think it's a very good way to start building your world. And then we have maps that you can go and edit them. The maps are really exciting. Essentially, you can see your map here. You can drag this. When you put it down, it gives you the location in the world. And you can say, for example, that this is, for example, uh, the island of Mut. And you give an example. You can link it to a map, or you can link it to a location, if you have one. You can put tags, like, for example, Mut Island. And then when you create, of course, the the tag is here. Because you're the creator, you can either delete it, or you can go to the view map, essentially, and see it in a like a full map kind of thing yeah. of the world here. It's worth mentioning that if you have an article called The Island of Moot, you can link the article to the map. So when you click on the blue thing, it will give you an option. Like, he, he's changed the screen now, but like he done with the other yeah. uh, one, which means that when you go to the map, you can sort of link directly to articles from the map, which is really helpful. Categories is a way for you to categorize your world and organize essentially the stru uh, create structure underneath uh, your articles. Timelines, as we discussed, is a way to build timelines for your world. You can put year, month, day, and hour, event types like births, deaths, diplomatic actions, disasters, marriages, uh, wed military actions, anything like that. And you can also set in importance. But as I said, this actually will be getting a a huge reshuffle because then you'll be able to have multiple timelines, merge them or converge them and split them and 
create alternative timelines, something yeah, like that, and, and secret timelines. Different ways of reckoning years and stuff as well. Yeah. And we have your followers. You can actually see who, who follows you, and you can actually get to know more people, and the settings for your world. And I think that's pretty much it. I mean, right now, the only way to discover other people is through the discovery stream that shows the latest things that people did, like this. It looks amazing, actually. That's awesome. Yes. I haven't read it just yet, so no. <laughs> I have to read it. And yeah, and you have also your notifications, which I don't have one right now, but you know, people following you, leaving comments to your profile and things like that. I'm sorry, I think I've been talking a lot. <laughs> But yeah, so that's that's the tool, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. So, uh, guys, it's that time. So let's get into roll call. So start sounding off where you're from. Um, and now, if we want to, if we want to, um, we have one question that came in. I uh, said, if you want to end the screen share, you yeah. can. So that gave them a good look at what's going on, which I appreciate. That was awesome. Um. Uh, someone did ask a question about calendars. Yeah. What's Are the we question? waiting for the roll call coming? Oh, I saw it. What about alternate calendars? Yes. So that's actually something. Is that the one... question you meant? Yes, yes, from Todd. Yeah. So uh, calendars, as in different ways of measuring time, is always one of the hardest ones to implement. We found ways through our community to build some sort of calendars, and we will be trying to implement them. I don't know if we're going to be part of Timelines version 2, because we're trying to essentially build the basic features that people need and grow uh, and, and build more bases than actually, you know, refine features. But we're definitely having it into, into, you know, uh, into our brains to actually build something like that. I, I've got some really good tool from one of our members of our community, which allows me to, you know, have a nice algorithm to create a calendar. So if it's possible and easy to do, we'll probably be doing it as quickly as possible. That's awesome. So I'm going to jump into the chat now and just see where people are uh, watching from. We got Todd in Dallas, Doug in Cleveland, Friggin'ators in Seattle, Washington, Patrick's in Sweden. We got Mon Monroe, Louisiana with Jacob and Nows. We've got Philly Drinks and Dragons, DM Don. We've got Poison hanging out from Kuwait, Toronto with Uncle Peter, Northern Virginia with Jeff, Kyle S is in Jersey, Mars Whip is in Dallas, Texas. We got Pokemon for what in Manitoba. We got uh, Kentucky in the house with Walt. Sal in Massachusetts with Comrade. Brian Collin is in Georgia. We've also got Underwood Sketches in Hillsborough, Missouri. Rio Rancho, New Mexico with Shallander. Uh, HK Gunner is in Maryland. Arizona with Crimson uh, Wolf. We've got Georgia in the house with uh, Taverza and a bunch of other stuff. I love the screen names. They really challenge me sometimes. We got <laughs> in Florida with uh, Meat Moo. Uh, we also have uh, San Francisco in the house with Boyd Hunter. We have Utah with Regilio. We've got ZH337A with Norway. I see a Rhode Island in the house, and I just kind of lost it. Um, <laughs> With Alexandra, we've got James from uh, Swindon, UK. Santa Barbara, California is in the house with Sean. John is in Granite City, City Illinois. Uh, my voice is really, really uh, rough after uh, the unpack packs unplugged. We've got Mark Kelly in the house with Aid. We've got Circleville, Ohio with Geek in Undies. We've got uh, Maryland in the house with, with Christian. We've uh, got Dave in... Wyoming, we got Montreal in the house with Jack. We've got sweet, some more sweeting with uh, Blamby. Colorado in the house with Keegan Sullivan. Winnipeg, Mon uh, Manitoba, Manitoba is with Malik Kuth. We've also got uh, Rotterdam, Netherlands in the house with Cohen. We've Ooh. got Australia in the house with, house with Alexander. We got... Um, Skyreach Castle over Serpent Hills. I'm a little skeptical of that one with Satori Shin. Uh, we, have, we also have Hamburg, Germany in the house with Marcus. Finland with Keegan. We're really, really international today, which I love. Wilder Smith is in New York. Uh, Zaref Gaming is in Redizio, New Mexico. We've got Ukraine in the house with Bluntman. Stillwater, Stillwater Oklahoma with Eldereth. Lincoln's in Sweden. We've got uh, Don, down in, Mex in Mexico, we've got the Misanthrope. 
uh, Bulgaria is in the house with uh, Mahata three two one. And all right, so we've got people all over the place. Is that another? Uh, uh, well, another one as well, but Johan. Johan, Johan Fink. Yes. For six years. Or should you okay. speak? <laughs> I can speak Dutch. Dutch. Yeah. I struggle with English. Oh it's very close. <laughs> so yes. that's, that's awesome. And we have a ton of people hanging out with us. We are almost up to 90 people live. It's a good yeah. Monday. So, um, yeah, so far, people seem to be really uh, digging what you guys are putting out there with World Anvil uh, in the chat. You know, I think the, the walkthrough was really helpful, giving people ideas. And I also noticed, so... So how much stuff can you work on that unpublished as saved as draft before uh, going public? As many, as many as you want. There is no limit to that. I mean, And you can do all the tags and all that stuff as well? I mean, the only thing you cannot do, of course, is navigate easily your world from your whole presentation because the articles are not published, so you cannot see them. You have to go through your every article and view it separately. But yes, you can do that. It's, there is nothing stopping you. Right. You just lose some of the functionality of it being yeah, live. Exactly. And the interactivity of it. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So do you want to tell us about the book you're writing? Oh. <laughs> the problem is, once we started World Anvil and everything went crazy, I'm, I, I have no idea anymore. It could be about dragons playing chess for all I know. I've completely forgotten. Oh, come on. It's not that bad. Come on. <laughs> I spent yesterday creating duchies on World Anvil. I was like, yes, finally. Um, and it got to the end of the day and my frontal lobes were just like melting down the front of my face and yeah so um it's all about finding finding time really right now isn't it yeah talk about your book though it's a really nice book honestly i like it <laughs> yeah it kind of um started from the perspective of what if macbeth was a fantasy novel and went from there um and we've got nomads and druid magic and various races trying to occupy the same amount, the same piece of land, um, which kind of has resonances from, this is a bit of a downer, from the London Bridge bombings in April. That was one of the, one of the starting points of my book, was how can people who are very, very different live together successfully? So that was one of the, one of the ideas for my book. And another of the ideas for my book was this sort of fantasy Macbeth, this sort of tragic spiral um, and then I'm building a, a big world that's kind of like 900 AD Europe, but with magic. So maybe a little bit what George R. R. Martin did with War of the Roses, but 500 years earlier. Nice. So nice. do you have any, uh, do you, have you published any other books? Is this the first one? I, I've got so close and then I've not finished. I just, I can't finish stuff. Because I've never had World well Anvil before. Yeah, that was. And I wish that wasn't the case, but I get part way through, and then I realise that my world building hasn't caught up with my first draft, and then I have a crisis, and then I never, I never finish. So I, I've published short stories before, um, nothing major or recent, or that would probably be found now, but I've never finished anything as big as a novel, because. Like I just, I've never been able to get my shit together. And now you understand why I wanted to build World Anvil because when she told me about her story, I was like, "This is a good story. You have a, a really good story there. You have a nice idea behind the structure of it. I want you to finish it. So I'm gonna do everything in my power to finish it. This means help you with your building and probably you know massage you during the night when you're actually very stressed and you want to kill people. So you know, world building was uh, something I could do about uh, with and yeah. you know. I built World Anvil. <laughs> That's yeah. how it started. I mean, the same thing happened with the last book, the Vatimin book. Yes, that is true. That's you, that also There's was... a book before which is half finished, and I never, fin I never finished it because I got halfway through my first draft, realized I needed to do more world building, couldn't organize myself, and that was the end of that. And it's a beautiful world. Like, I can't wait to finish the one I'm writing so I can go back to that one and stick it on World Anvil and actually finish it. Um, but for me, I think this is going to be the gateway to actually ever finishing anything. <laughs> And once it's finished, I think it's going to be quite a good book. It's quite interesting. <laughs> you know, I I write well. It's just it's just finishing stuff. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I see this is a double-edged sword, sword here. You're, you're not going to be able to blame not finishing world building now. 
for finishing your books. You're going to have to finish them. I'm yeah. so excited, though, because finally I'm not writing my notes on napkins. <laughs> hey, those napkins have a place, too. They're very important. <laughs> oh, they do. They do. Actually, all of that, for example, one of the things I want to build for Old Danville is an application that will allow you to take photos and put the notes that you, not to build goals in the application, but you know, you're around and you find a really cool thing. Like for example, we go to castles a lot sure. because we love it. And you see some inscription there or something. And that's a great idea for world building. You want to be able to take out your phone, take a photo and say, that's a freaking amazing idea. I want to build that for my world. And the moment you say it's sent, it puts it on the website. So it waits for you when you yeah, sit yeah. on your computer. As a part of the start, notes function. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. To start writing about it. That's also awesome. that's one of the things I was going to ask you about too. Is do you have any plans to maybe do an, an app in the future or make it more mobile friendly? Well, the website is already a bit mobile friendly, and we're trying to make it. Actually, people say it's actually way more than anything else, but I believe it's not. I believe it needs a lot of work to be done to it. But I don't believe that world building is something that you will do in regular basis on an iPhone or something like that. It will be probably something that you do in front of your screen or in a laptop. But you know, it is a difficult time and people do need to have some for mobility. So what I would like to do for sure to begin with in a mobile app is able to take notes and able to read through your words at the, with ease. Because if you're on, around the table and you want to actually get reference for your world, this being very easy and very quick, that I want. Because you know, people are writing and they want to have, I mean, I think that many people who write their own worlds or who, who play in Forgotten Realms, for example, spend a lot of time just looking for a reference in a book. And if you could actually just write three words and find this reference, that would save you a lot of time to begin with and make the game flow faster yeah. and easier. Yeah, like one of the things I was thinking of when you, you, you talked about you get ideas in the middle of the night. It's like, oh, that's where an app would be used, really useful. Reach over to your yeah. nightstand, grab your phone, plug in your notes, and then drift back to dreamland. Because exactly. I, I feel like I've lost so many ideas and thoughts because I thought of them laying in bed and I never wrote them down. Yeah. So And that's the idea about the app because I have the same problem. I, I don't have so many ideas in bed, but I have pro ideas in the shower. Yeah. And it's a, uh, Janet, I no, say, yeah, because there's a pencil in the shower that he uses to write on the tiles, which are covered in maps and figures and equations. I, it looks like Einstein has just like had his head exploded in our shower. <laughs> I will tell you, uh, you're in good company there because uh, Satine Phoenix actually does the same thing. I, I, uh, I, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen her bathroom, and I'm like, what is all this writing on your, on your shower? <laughs> yeah, because I did write the shower. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I, I was studying with a friend of mine actually who is currently experimenting with playing with Alexa. And we actually might be building an API so you can say to Alexa, write me a note on Hold Danville, and they will actually just write their own note on Hold Danville, which I think is going to be very that fun. That would be amazing. Yeah. That would be cool. It looks, it looks like Janet didn't know about that idea. I don't know about <laughs> that. <laughs> it was just yesterday, actually, I haven't told you about it. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. But then how many, how many NPCs are going to be called Alexa because of that? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not many. <laughs> Well, it really wouldn't be any different than like you know the popular names that have come out over the years for babies. So it'd be like the same thing, but for NPCs. Yeah, but for NPCs, like ten Alexa NPCs. Actually, that was one of the competitions we would like to run uh, soon enough because the last days I was going through um, what people are writing, you know, going through the website and just reading through their things, and I saw, for example, that almost everyone would have an article about humans. And I say, wouldn't it be a good idea if people can actually write articles about humans and then essentially compare notes or write a bit of a competition, like a weekly thing, let's rate the best human article or the best elf, for example, in the multiverse of World Danville yeah. or something like that. So, yeah, no, that's, that's the kind of things I want to do because, you know... No, yeah, I, I mean, at, at its core, we were always thinking that world building can be quite a lonely thing. So one of the things we wanted to do with World Danville was not just have a website where you can put cool stuff in and showcase your worlds, but where it really promotes discussion and promotes promotes the furthering of world building, basically. Between creators, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Community. You want to build a community. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So Todd has a question. Does the map tools allow one to link a location to a map of a city or a town, then in turn is linked to a map of a tavern along with some 
means of linking to NPCs of that tavern. In fact, you could actually start with the map of your galaxy, go down to your arm, down to a planetary system, down to planets, down to whatever you want, all the way to the map of the uh, hole underneath your keep. Yes, you can do that. You can actually link from map to map or from map to location to location to map or whatever else you want. Oh, man. Yes, that would give me that's the idea. The idea is essentially to create full worlds as as full as you can actually do them. So Fernando Q wants Alexa as a narrator for your game. <laughs> <laughs> that could happen, I guess. That would be very funny. Um, so is there is uh, is there anything specifically you want to you know you want people to know about World Builder that we haven't covered yet? Or you know, or do you want to talk about the different levels on your Patreon? That's something I usually don't actually talk about um, on these shows, but, but I feel like you guys are doing something that's so cool, and you're really providing a great service for people. Um, if you want to pip your Patreon and, and you know go over whatever levels you have, feel free. Honestly, I... did we talk about World Ember? No, but we will. But uh, let's just address what yeah. uh, was I said. Honestly, I. I don't want to promote well, uh, our Patreon. If people want to help us, they're more than happy to go there and check it out. We are doing it out of love. The fact that we can actually, you allow us to do it essentially more and more, it's a blessing for us both. And we are very happy. I mean, no, I won't promote our Patreon or anything like that. We just say thank you to the people who already uh, are helping us. And if people like what we do, then you know, go ahead and try it out. And if you really like it, then Help us out. That's all. Help us out to keep it going and keep it growing. Well, I will add something to this. Like, if you know, and this is the advice I always get to people that create something. If you really love it, it's got to be a business, or it, the chances of it sticking around diminish greatly. You know, it, it's real easy to put something down that is a shit ton of work and doesn't, you know, and doesn't provide, you know, isn't going to provide for your family or or help you, you know move forward in, in your life. So re really, I feel like the best thing you can do for your community and for a project like this is making sure that you guys get compensated for it so it can go forward. Cause it sounds like a really cool, cool tool. And I think people are gonna really enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it will be a blessing and amazing thing to actually at some point say to my day job, you know what, it, it's been great, but now I want to actually just build my own stuff. That would be amazing. But to what Janet said, actually, uh, if there is something we want to talk about is Woldember. So this, I don't know if we mentioned already, but in December 1st, we start a competition, which is the unholy child between Nanora Aimo and Mapvember, which will allow you to go in there, start building your world. You're going to have a goal of 6,000 words in 31 days, which is not so much. It's about 200 words a day, if you think about it. It's not a huge, you want to keep it slow and small for the first, uh, for the first year. And if you manage to do 6,000 words, you're going to get a super cool badge, like the ones that people from the Patreon have, and that will remain to your profile, hopefully, for the times for the years to come. And since you're going to be the first time we ever do it, it's going to be quite collective, uh, you know, like a, a collective uh, piece of memorabilia. And for the people who actually manage to read 6,000 words, we're going to have some prizes and we're going to have some fun essentially in the community voting for the best uh, article from those that actually, from those that managed to exceed the 6,000 words in total. And we're going to give a prize to the person who wrote the most words. And we're going to give a prize uh, to the person that the article has more likes. And then maybe some well. discretionary prizes as well. Uh, yes, exactly. Depending on how excited I get, which yes. is usually quite a lot. Yes. So that's, that's actually just. The thing that we would like to actually let people know that we are doing it to promote essentially world building. We want people to create their worlds. We know that there are so many people out there that have so great ideas and they never put their ass down to just start writing them. And if nothing else, that's what World Anvil is out there. Uh, yeah, we for. want people to get excited about world building and follow that through to actually complete their world building. Sweet. So there is one question from Jeff. Uh, this is a, a functionality question. If I choose a name for something and link it in multiple locations and later decide to change the name, do I have to make the change in each location or just once? OK. So if you link to an article that already existed, the uh, name will automatically change. If you create a placeholder and then you change the name of that article, for the time being, it doesn't change. 
but this is something that was already uh, discussed in the community and I would really, really like to do. It's one of the hardest features to do, not because of the way to do it, because, but because of the resources it takes to be done. Essentially, the answer is it takes a lot of resources, it costs a lot of virtual CPU power to do it, essentially, and money. So that would be one of the hardest to implement because it, essentially it means that the system has to go throughout all your articles, check them meticulously, find the references, then change them to the new name. And if you do it three times on the row, you have understand that this can actually be a big thing. So, you know, that is the reason that is not there just yet. But hopefully, as we grow and we have actually more resources financially to be able to do it, we will do it, yes. But again, if you have created the article before, definitely it will automatically uh, uh, link it. It's not a difference at all. So, so we have a couple of questions. Uh, Fergal has asked a couple of times. He wants to know your favorite race class combos. I know you guys are role players and play RPGs, but I don't know for sure that you even play Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, we do. We do. We do. We're playing a 5e right now. Yeah, we play 5e, yeah. So my friends always called me the arrogant, corrupted noble. That will give you a point of what kind of race I play. Uh, I play the noble most of the times. Uh, I will either be a paladin that is not such a good paladin because he's kind of arrogant and a bit corrupted. Uh, or Great least, asshole. Yes. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> probably an elf, I would say. <laughs> That's from my side. Asshole elf. <laughs> Um, I played a bunch of different things. Um, the thing with me is always, um, we always say with my characters, they're like, sneaky, 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 stab, 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 stab. So that tends to be kind of roguish or kind of rogue adjacent. I played a bard, a bard rogue at one point. I'm actually not putting up by profession. So playing a bard for me is always super fun. Um, Jack is by profession a soprano, like an opera soprano, by the way, just to be clear, just to plug it there, because she doesn't talk about it, but yeah. Speaking <laughs> and killing, I don't think you can help yourself. You're a ginger. <laughs> <laughs> Making loud noises with my face. Um, yeah, yeah, so um, actually the one time I tried to play a half-elf, she got turned into a demon, and since then I've just been playing tieflings. So uh, that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think that the other character you really enjoyed playing was Aurora. So she was the other end of the spectrum. She was, uh, this was a sort of Pathfinder homebrew. And she was half angel, half dragon, which sort of six feet tall and a complete meat creature. But she was a paladin of the goddess Shailen. And the, the idea of the goddess Shailen is that she's the goddess of, of sort of beauty and art and, and lovely things. And she approaches her enemies by giving them the rose. So she, she sort of encourages her followers to make peace with the enemies. But her weapon was a spiky warhammer. So it was a little bit like, you can have the rose or the spiky warhammer. She was really fun to play. She had no concept of moral grey area, um, which caused me huge amounts of problems as a player. Um, and me as a storyteller. No, you sure. loved it. You just exploited it. It was hilarious. But um, yeah, she was very, very epic. She was like high fantasy epic campaign. No grunge. <laughs> awesome. So Zareph uh, Gaming has a question as well. I'm scared of world building. Any advice to deal with the jitters? Good question. Yes, actually. Um, you give your advice, and I'll give my advice. I think that the first thing I ever do when I start, when I approach the essentially the white uh, paper syndrome, you know, the idea of like, okay, blank now the blank page, you know, what do I do now? Is that I just start writing? It's the easiest way of actually tackling it. You just sit down there and you write anything you can imagine. All the crap in the world, it doesn't matter. The idea of start writing itself will actually make you forget the fact that you were afraid to write in the first place. And then it will just flow most of the times. Uh, the other thing you can actually always do is take it from the bottom up, not from the uh, from top top, from top down. Because top down is very intimidating. Starting to build something huge, it's hard. But building a village and talking about, for example, a hero that used to live there, it's much easier. It's much more approachable. It's something you can actually get inspiration from your role-playing games, as you said, from, from the last campaign or anything like that, and start building from there. Yeah. I'd also say don't be afraid to go with the rule of cool, but remember to ask why later. So if you do something just because it's cool, do it just because it's cool, because it will get you started, because something's awesome, like your warriors have skulls painted on their testicles, or 
whatever it is that's awesome like your your dragons all have a commune in the south of france whatever it is because it's cool and you want it but then don't forget that later you can go back and ask why because that's going to give your world a lot more depth and that's going to build logic around the rule of cool i think so, the why is always a good question yeah. to ask in in world building it's like you do something then you ask yourself why and the why will create the next and the next and the next reason of actually yeah, it, creating your world yeah. the avalanche of logic so I have to totally agree um, with what you said about starting small. Like that was the best advice I've ever seen. I think it was actually, I think I read that in the World Builders Guide. Actually, was put out for AD and D or a Dragon Magazine or something. And like, if you could just create the tavern that your players are going to meet in, and and just like start from there, or any you know whatever it is, it doesn't actually matter, but. And they just build out from there. And as a GM, I've I've taken that to heart. So I never, I never try to build more than I think I'm going to use. Yeah. You know, and, and from there you start filling in the blanks. And like you said, if you do something because it's cool, that's great. But you can later go back and figure out why you know why it's like that. And, and with, another, sorry, go on, go on. Like, yeah, I had just had another idea about an advice I, I I had for people who specifically write worlds from right from playing role playing games. Make your players write notes. It is a it's a funny one, but I found out that the moment that somebody in your party starts writing a journal, you actually have research material you never imagined. You have like tons of things you never had to do, and they're available for you to actually start building your world around them. This is what happens when one of your players is a writer. <laughs> we, yeah, we actually do have a player that does that. Also, recording your your. Your games is really good too. I know uh, Jim Davis from WebDM likes to go back and rewatch them and take notes and 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 you know use that tool as well. So you know, yeah, yeah, I've know people that use voice recorders. So yeah, there's a ton of ways that you do that. Note taking is probably one of the best ones if you have a good note taker. That could be a double edged sword. That's true. I mean, the idea of actually you have the recording kind of does it makes you no need. The, the note taker, but again, it means that you have to go and listen back to your game, and you've been playing like for three or four hours. That can be a lot of listening to do. So, so that's a lot of yeah. Yeah. But and, and and like going back to the idea of like having like world building jitters, but that like like so that this is this goes for almost everything in life. If you want to do a thing, you just need to start doing it, even if you're not good at it, even if you're horrible when you start. It doesn't matter. Just take the first step and start. Otherwise, you're gonna you know, you're gonna you're going to succumb to analysis paralysis. Paralysis. Ah, I can't talk. And you're never going to get anything done. You just need to move forward and and do it. Like if I waited to start a YouTube channel so I could actually speak properly and have people understand me, we would <laughs> never have a YouTube channel. <laughs> the other thing that I'd add as a last piece of advice is something that writers have a problem with which is ignore your internal editor. Just start by creating stuff, and you can go back and look at it later. Don't worry, just create, make, make, make. In fact, there's a program called Write or Die, which is a writing program where if you stop typing, little spiders come down the screen. And if you stop typing for too long, your words start getting deleted. Okay, I don't suggest you use write or die because it's terrifying, <laughs> but that kind of idea where you just keep putting words on the page, just keep throwing out ideas, ignore grammar, ignore everything, just vomit up your ideas, and then go back and clean them up later. And you know what? If you're in World Downville, just put it out and ask for people for feedback, and they will yeah. help you, and you're going to get... I mean, we have that a lot. People in Discord, we have... One of the most active channels we have is actually the, the questions and... Uh, the world building uh, channel, which is essentially people just ask about anything they can imagine of, and they ask feedback for their work, and people are there to help them. Yeah, we are we are terrible world builders because someone just uh, Jeff just asked a uh, question for Nordark: Any chance of getting a campaign world entered into this tool? Uh, I'm in Nate's campaign and would like more world info. And right now, literally, we have more people using and with our material in writing than we have. From all the you know from all the stuff we make in videos, and we just never get around to actually you know writing it out or putting it into it putting it into a game, uh, and that would be a great idea. And we've discussed different things like that. We just have to set aside the time and and make ourselves do it. Or 
you can put all together as co-authors and get some other people to become co-authors as well. And you can write it all together. Yeah. Delegate, yeah. as one of good friends said lately. <laughs> Uh, so Todd has a question. Yes, they can. You can do stuff and set it to private. That is a pay. That is a paid feature through the subscription. It's like three bucks a month. So if it if it's worth hiding, three bucks shit isn't going to break the bank. Yeah. So and you know I would encourage supporting these just, guys. Just buy me a coffee. <laughs> yeah. I need to continue writing anyway. <laughs> so what is that? It's like pennies or something a day. So, uh, so that, that, that's definitely, we are, you know, right up on the hour mark a little bit past, and I feel like I could just talk to you guys all day about this stuff, but then I won't get any work done and I'm super crushed for <laughs> having done the, the convention this past weekend. Uh, so I will give you guys, you know, a couple minutes, just a ending statement, anything you want to leave people with. I'm just going to say your links are in the description, guys, check these guys out. Go, go go sign up for the website. It's going to close soon for a while, and then it'll open back up. So if you don't sign up within the next, uh, how many days? 25. 20, yeah, 20, uh, 20 days, actually. 20, yeah, 20 days. 20 days. In the next 20 days from this live broadcast, I don't know how long you're going to have to wait to get in there to use this thing. So uh, definitely go sign up today, and I will kick it back to you guys. Well, thank you very much for having us. First of all, it was really it was really fun. I mean, we love yeah. talking about geek and this, this stuff. Great. We could just nerd out. It's yes, awesome. exactly. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> um, if we have to say anything about Goldanville, is that we are first and foremost a community, and we are literally just a couple of guys here, like uh, husband and wife. We love world building, and we share your passion. And you know, we just want to have more worlds out there. And the only way to do, we could imagine that we can actually do that is by helping people build more worlds. Because, you know, nerding is about actually learning more stuff and seeing what is out there. And, you know, that's what we can provide. Yeah, so come join us. Come sign up. It's fun. That's pretty much it from us. There you go. So, guys, one last thing. Jim Davis from WebDM said, go sign up. So it, <laughs> if nerdarchy is not enough for you, WebDM has also just endorsed it officially. So with that, guys, until next time, stay nerdy. Stay nerdy, guys. <laughs>